Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Crescent Sickle, which you can get from getting rank 2 in the Brotherhood of Blood Covenant with a plus 150 kill death ratio, or by purchasing it from Chancellor Welger in New Game Plus Plus. Bonfire aesthetics do not affect him, so you actually do need to get to New Game Plus Plus in order for it to be available. Now, I didn't do either of these. One of my friends and a longtime viewer of this channel donated the weapon to me, along with the curved twin blade from the previous video, so huge shout out and thank you to him. Now, getting started. The Crescent Sickle requires 12 strength, 19 dexterity, which I think is a little bit odd, and 12 intelligence in order to wield. It has an E scaling in strength, C in intelligence, and, er, C in dexterity, and C in magic. Uh, the physical base damage of the weapon is 180, the magic base is 120, and the attack rating on my build with a ring of blades plus two is 434, and that is uh, with the ring of blades plus two, so without it, it is a 384. The counter strength of the weapon is 110, the poise damage of the weapon is 15 per hit, and the weight is 8 units. Now, this weapon is kind of awkward to use, to be perfectly honest. Now, I'm not saying that just because it's a uh, Reaper class weapon, I'm saying it because of the length of the weapon. Now, the reason that's an issue is because it's uh, kind of difficult to hit with the sweet spot for it because it's so long. Now, the sweet spot on this weapon is not like the Bone Scythe where it is on the outside of the blade, and it's not on the inside of the blade where you would expect either. It's actually on that point at the very edge of the curve. So, essentially what you want to try and imagine is that you're trying to swing it down and have it like stick in the person's head, essentially. You want to sort of impale their head with that point, and that is your sweet spot. That's what you want to aim for. And because it's so far out, it's kind of awkward to hit with, it really is. And when you don't, your damage is very low. So, I'd have to say that the biggest con of this weapon would be the fact that its uh, sweet spot is definitely a bit awkward to deal with. Uh, biggest pro of the weapon, though, uh, that's the fact that it, of course, like all Reaper class weapons, goes through shields like No Tomorrow. Even when, uh, even when you don't hit with the sweet spot, it still goes through shields some, due to the fact that it does have some magic damage to it, which is, of course, a good thing. Other pros of the weapon, it does have a very high critical damage to it, and that's definitely a good thing. I mean, you don't want to be fishing for backstabs or anything, but you know, when you do get a backstab, when you get a guard break repost, when you get a regular repost, it'll do a fair amount of damage. So, that's something good to keep in mind. Now, some other random things with this weapon that I have noticed. Running attacks, uh, they can be very difficult to hit with. That's a standard Reaper class thing, though. And because of that, you need to really time it well, especially if you want to hit with that sweet spot. Because if you don't hit with the sweet spot, you'll go from hitting like 110s, 150s, around that range, to hitting around, you know, 3, 4, maybe 500 on occasion, depending on your opponent's armor. So that's a, that's a big deal with this weapon, it really is. Now, as far as uh, other things about the weapon are concerned, such as the ability to do combos, this weapon does not have a very high poise damage. Combos with this weapon are actually surprisingly difficult to pull off, because even when you do occasionally pull them off, if you're not hitting with the sweet spot on both parts of the combo, it doesn't really work too well. So. There's a lot that comes into play when you're using this weapon, and that sweet spot really dictates a lot of everything, as far as your damage output, as far as your ability to do combos, and it makes it very fun and interesting to use. Now, the hitboxes on the weapon, they are a little bit strange sometimes. Uh, I've had the weapon completely pass through people and cause no damage, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, and something, I guess, to hope for if you're fighting against it, of course, but uh, if you're using it, definitely something to watch out for. So, When infused with magic, this weapon, it doesn't really change too terribly much. It goes from an ECC scaling to an EDB scaling, and that B scaling sounds all well and good, 
but in the end it only brings an increase of the attack rating to two or it goes the the, the attack rating increases from uh 434 to 456 not that big of a difference at that point it becomes 201 magic base and 129 physical base so it's more of a magic weapon at that point and that's a good thing because magic armor magic defenses are relatively lower so anyway it is what it is uh, this is actually the last fight in the video that went surprisingly fast I believe I covered everything so uh, if not then feel free to ask some questions in the comments hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.